It's half past two. So welcome to everybody to this meeting of the Leamington Society and a particular welcome to Stephen Marks, who I hope you can see on the screen somewhere. Stephen, could you just do a wave so that people can identify you quickly? Stephen is the new town clerk for Royal Leamington Spa. I say new, but he's not that new now. <laughs> he's been around for a bit. And we're delighted to have him plus Catherine. Catherine, if you could just give us a wave as well. We're going to be talking to us about Royal Leamington Spa's neighbourhood plan. Now, if this is approved by you all, and we are hoping you will approve it on May the 6th, this will be the largest neighbourhood plan in the country. So it's very special. And that's why we've asked Catherine and Stephen to come along this afternoon to tell us all about it and to answer questions. Could you put your questions in the chat, please? Anyway, without any more ado, can I pass you over to Stephen and to Catherine? And can I suggest you just turn your videos off for the time being? Bring them back on when the questions come, but it does help. Thank you. Catherine. Okay, thank you, Sydney. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see so many people um, here this afternoon for this uh, presentation and chat about the Leamington Neighbourhood Plan. Um, I do have a presentation to share with you all, so I will just share my screen. You just bear with me a second. Right, I'm assuming, hopefully, that everybody can see that on their screen now. Uh, so, the Royal Leamington Spa Neighbourhood Plan um, goes from 2020, when it was inspected and passed inspection, to 2029, which is the current lifespan of the Warwick District Council local plan. So, it is a land use document bespoke for Leamington Spa itself. Um, as I'm sure most of you already know, the Warwick District Council local plan covers the whole district and is therefore necessarily more generic um, in its overview and its purview. Uh, our neighbourhood plan drills down further and provides more planning and land use detail and policy just for Leamington Spa itself. Uh, the plan has been four and a half years in the making and it was created by members of the steering group that was specifically set up to do that. And the steering group consists of residents, some town councillors, business representatives, local interest groups, community groups. Um, and we have had the input of the three local authorities in terms of officer input in their um, expertise areas. The document, the final document, I should say, contains 19 policies and they cover our five objectives, those being housing and development, community and culture, green spaces and parks, roads and transport and business support town centre. So this is just a, an overview of where we started and how we've ended up here. So the neighbourhood plan area was designated in September 2016, that is the Leamington Spa Parish Boundary Area. Uh, this is the amount of community consultation that we did. We did a launch event in January 2017, which was attended by over 200 people at the Town Hall. We followed that up with 25 drop-in sessions, five theme group sessions, attendance at 10 community events across town, also attendance at six community forums, 11 democracy days for schools, uh, many local press items. We do have a bespoke neighborhood plan website and uh, social media feeds as well. So that all took place throughout 2017, 2018. And from that consultation, five themes emerged from people's comments and ideas and they became our objectives. Sorry, come back. Oh, hang on. Shouldn't touch that at all. Right, so the first draft of the plan uh, was made and consulted on and responses that came in, uh, we did make a few changes from those responses um, and we redrafted it and made it available in January 2019. That then went to what's called the Regulation 14 
consultation that took place in July and August 2019. More changes were made from that consultation to the Regulation 16 draft, which was the final draft created and consulted on at the beginning of last year. We just managed to squeeze that six week consultation in. An independent examiner, planning inspector, was appointed in February 2020, Andrew Matheson. Um, he did his six week inspection of the plan uh, in February and March last year. And we received his inspection report recommending that the plan proceeds to referendum just before lockdown in March last year. And as I am sure you are all aware, no local elections were possible in 2020 due to the COVID-19 restrictions. So we kind of came to a, a crashing halt at that point and had to put a hold on the whole process until the beginning of this year, when the government said um, local elections were to be permitted in 2021, and we are now going to referendum in May. So this is, I promise this is a brief policies overview. I know it doesn't look very brief on the screen, but I promise it is. Uh, so if we start over in the left hand corner at the top, the number one priority for Leamington Spa residents in all consultations that we did was protection and conservation of their parks and gardens. Now in the neighbourhood plan, there is the ability to do what's called local green space designation. Um, so that, that gives any green spaces and parks um, additional green belt protection from any future development. However, we have to have those green space designations meet certain government criteria. So we set up a separate working group to make sure that the parks and gardens in Leamington met those criteria of the, I think it's 76 green spaces and parks of varying sizes that there are that uh, the district council own across Leamington Spa, 28 all met those uh, criteria. So we put those into the document and the planning inspector visited all 28 sites last February and agreed with us that indeed all 28 parks did deserve local green space designation. Moving across to traffic and cycling, cycling was the number two priority for residents in the consultation. So within the document, there are policies about improvements for cyclists in certain named areas, Bath Street, High Street, Prince's Drive, Beecham Hill, etc. Uh, particular support for the bus rail interchange at the rail station and provision of cycle racks and storage at key locations around town to support further cycling. Town centre shopping, uh, we have policies in the document that support highway improvements, the creation of new event spaces around town uh, that support the flexibility of changes of use on upper floors in the town centre and the retention of existing car parking. Uh, there are already six local shopping centres in the local plan which have added protection from development. We've added four more that we thought should be in there and should have additional protections. Moving across to number four, housing designs and types. Uh, we looked particularly at the provision of family homes which are underprovided, and uh, certainly in Leming South Leamington to seek to rebalance the renter owner occupier mix by increasing the amount of affordable housing. So we we support that within the document. We're also very much looking at pushing for higher than minimum standard requirements for design and energy, uh, particularly looking at the building for life standards or any equivalent. We also mention passive house within that. Uh, the document supports brownfield, I should say appropriate brownfield and infill development across town and self-build and also live work units specifically on Court Street car park. Conservation policies there include more design details specific to certain areas, uh, retention of gardens and trees wherever possible, new tree planting is um, emphasized as well, and protection of key views and of key groupings of buildings named within the conservation area assessment. Creative quarter, we're looking at appropriate usage and access to buildings there, signage so people know where these buildings are, and also looking at changes, making changes of use easier within secondary retail areas, such as the Old Town. And finally, supporting actions are found in the appendix, 
and that lists six areas which the town council will support and promote and take an active lead on uh, that's as things such as creating a list of assets of community value to be protected supporting appropriate public art and looking at SIL priorities, where we can spend our SIL money. For those unaware, SIL is a community infrastructure levy. Uh, that's a district council levy on new development, which creates additional floor space for 100 square meters or more, or creates a new dwelling. Of that levy, we currently at the town council receive 15%. Once we have a made neighborhood plan, we receive 25% of the sill. I've just popped at the bottom corner there that there is a summary sheet available. The document itself, the plan itself, is 106 pages long. Obviously that's quite a long read, so we thought it would be useful if there was a summary sheet of the policies available as well. So that is on the Neighbourhood Plan website and hard copies are also available at Leamington Library, Lillington Library and the Town Hall and those can be taken away. So here we are, this is the uh, referendum day is upcoming. This is the poster that you will start to see all across town. Uh, it's Thursday the 6th of May, make your vote count. So a vote for the plan, uh, some of the benefits that will ensue from the plan should it be made on the 6th of May are that it will protect those 28 parks and green spaces from future development, support a robust and workable creative quarter redevelopment, promote ho higher housing design standards, encourage brownfield usage, support the use of sustainable travel and help protect our existing community facilities. So what happens next? The date, Thursday the 6th of May 2021. I'm sure most of you are already aware that that is the date of the local county council elections and police and crime commissioner election on that day so we will be having our election on the same day as those so look out for three ballot papers that will be coming through your letterboxes. The steering group is leading on a promotional campaign it's a six-week campaign and that commences fully on Monday next Monday 29th of March that will include social media feeds uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, press releases one has already gone out this week so you should see that in the Courier and the Observer there is a vlog being created to go online about it. Uh, neighborhood plan website, town council website. Uh, we're currently in the middle of creating photo montages of people of, of all sorts of different sorts of people across town supporting the neighborhood plan and showing their support publicly. There will be banners across town in locations for which we have permission uh, and posters. And there will be a flyer coming through your doors a week commencing the 19th of April. Um, and that's to every household in Leamington Spa. All registered voters in Leamington will receive a polling card and it is a simple question on that card. It's a yes or no answer. Do you want Warwick District Council to use the neighbourhood plan for Royal Leamington Spa to help it decide planning applications in the neighbourhood area? Important dates to note there on the right hand side. Um, if you are not currently on the electoral roll, you need to register to vote with WDC by the 19th of April. If you wish to use a postal vote, you need to register with WDC by the 20th of April. And if you wish to use a proxy vote, you need to register by the 27th of April. So important dates to note there. So we do not need a minimum amount of people to turn out to vote on the day. What we do need is 50% of those who do vote plus one for a decisive outcome. I've just popped on there some um, national figures for you to see what the usual average turnout is in a neighbourhood plan referendum. It's 33%. Um, there you can see some local places that already have their neighbourhood plans in place. Kenilworth got a 28% turnout, Whitnash 15% and Stratford 26%. As Sydney said um, earlier at the beginning, Leamington Spa does have the largest population to take part or have the ability to take part in a neighbourhood plan referendum. So anything approaching a 33% turnout in Leamington would be absolutely amazing. On receipt of a yes vote, should that be the case, and we very much hope it is, WDC will make the plan as soon as practically possible. So at their next full council meeting after the 6th of May, they will vote to adopt the plan 
and it will become part of the WDC local plan and part of statutory planning policy for Leamington. What happens beyond the referendum after the 6th of May and after the plan is hopefully made, uh, the Town Council will be convening a working group to monitor the efficacy of the neighbourhood plan in planning applications coming forward in Leamington in the future and its use by applicants and by planning officers. Uh, it will also be reviewing documented intervals to ascertain the most useful policies and identify any policies which have lacked effectiveness or not been as effective as we were hoping that they would be or any that have become outdated or superseded by changes to government policy. Uh, the group will also be there to review SIL progress and expenditure on projects within the neighbourhood plan um, and the Town Council's supporting actions. Uh, what we're hoping is that whilst that working group will contain representatives from the Town Council, the councillors, it will also retain members of the existing steering group who have been in the process from the start and have much experience and expertise of the plan. We will also retain our neighbourhood plan website moving forward and give regular updates and our social media feeds. Now a full review, full formal review will become necessary around 2025-2026 um, as the local plan moves forward as well in its review. Oh sorry. And finally, um, I'll stop touching the mouse. That is the banner as well that you will be seeing around town. I think we've got six of those that are going up in very visible central locations, north to south, east to west. Uh, there will also be banners in the town hall, the leisure centre and the shopping centre. OK, so any questions, obviously feel free to ask them now. Or if we don't have time for them, as Sydney said, I am more than willing to take any emails as well. Thank you very much, Catherine. If you can unshare your screen now. There we go. People can turn their videos back on again. And Carol Slate is there somewhere ready to read your questions. Carol, have we any questions in the chat? We have got a few questions, so do feel free to um, put some more questions there. Or if you don't want to do the chat, you can use the function just to raise your hand and you can unmic yourself and ask one directly. Um, so either way is much appreciated. So Catherine, the first question um, from Robert Garandry, I hope that's pronounced correctly, is uh, where do allotments fit? We do have a specific policy for allotments. This is, this is the document, by the way, people, you can download it on the Neighbourhood Plan website if you wish to do so, have a look through it. But we do have a specific uh, policy and allotments. Let me find it. Bear with. Mm. Ah, policy RLS 10, specifically for allotments. Uh, the following allotment areas are shown on the policies map, which is also on the website, will be protected. Um, Northumberland Road, Binswood Allotment Association, Milverton New Allotments Association, St Mary's Allotments, Campion Hills and Rugby Road. So all, all the ones that the Town Council already manage. Wonderful. Robert also just wanted to make the observation that polling cards are not ballot papers and do not have the voting question on them. That is very true. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, Chris Davis asked, uh, what potential sums could be generated by the SIL levy for use up by the Town Council? Well, I've got to say not massive because Leamington Spa does not, simply does not have the space for any large scale development. Uh, we are pretty full, as I'm sure everybody knows from the boundary. Um, so we wouldn't be getting anything like perhaps Warwick would be getting for its, its new development happening down there. However, we are already starting to, to receive some SIL receipts. Um, but even when we get 25%, if and when we get 25% after the plan is made, um, it will be used to supplement, I would say, and help out with projects going forward that were already being funded. We would add to projects such as infrastructure improvements, cycle routes, wayfinding, signage, things like that. So it's supplemental. 
Wonderful. And um, Helen Olcott would like to know, how does this relate to the plan for Newbold to be turned into a cyclodrome? Uh, it does not, I'm afraid. It does not at all. Uh, Newbold Common is not one of our 28 local green space designations because it already has green belt status. And also the plan was signed off by the inspector a year ago before the final plan for Newbold Common was put forward for planning permission. Thank you. Um, Hugh and Christine Woodland, um, does the neighbourhood plan say anything about HMOs? Not specifically, no. We did have many discussions about it. Um, we had people from the District Council Housing Department to talk to us about it. Uh, in the end, it was felt that we could not effectively add anything more to what is already in the local plan in terms of policy H6 and the Article 4 direction that already exists. So it was felt better to be able to support uh, affordable housing, family housing, that kind of thing. But we are very much aware, uh, just separately as the town council, of issues with HMOs in town. Thank you. Um, Penny Gillett's asked one, which actually I think a lot of people have asked me about as well, which is what force does the plan have over government inspectors overall policies? It is part, it will become part of the local plan, as I said, so it will have the same effect and impact as the local plan has. When, say a planning inspector comes to town and does an inspection on an appeal, a uh, planning appeal that's taking place, they will take the neighbourhood plan into consideration, uh, supplemental to the local plan. And as I said, we have a lot more detail in the, the neighbourhood plan that's specific to Leamington. So they will be able to take the local plan, look at the more generic planning policies that cover the whole district, see what applies there, but then also take the neighbourhood plan and say, okay, well, this is a planning uh, appeal in, I don't know, Bath Street, High Street, somewhere like that, that is already specifically mentioned. Um, if we have said that the neighbourhood plan supports particular development down there, then he would take that into account. If it says the opposite, says we do not want to see development in this specific area for this specific reason, then he will take that into account as well. Um, Marion Tolbert, is there anything in the neighbourhood plan about retrofitting existing, with brackets, listed housing and sustainable ways, not just new bills? No, there is not, I'm afraid, no. Okay, um, Ignati would like to ask uh, Diakov Richmond, um, if cycling is number two priority, what is number one? And what cycling infrastructure can we expect? Will it be segregated lanes which are safer for all road users, including pedestrians? Uh, the number one priority I think I mentioned in my presentation was the protection and conservation of green spaces and parks across town. So that's the answer to that one. The other one is uh, specific policy RLS 14, uh, is regarding just cycling on its own. We wanted a specific separate policy for that. And yes, it does actually say, if you don't mind me quoting, where possible new links to the existing cycle network should be created, preferably segregated from traffic. Um, it does say, um, it? proposals to extend the network of safe and convenient cycle routes for all abilities, including the creation of on pavement lanes where no other option is available or viable will be supported but the preference is always for a segregated lane. Very interesting. Um, uh, there's no other questions in the chat at the moment. Um, does anybody, if anybody else would like to ask a question, please do. Oh, there is, sorry. Um, Mark Sullivan, it's a long one, that's why. It's uh, on detailed policies on conservation area and listed buildings. These are national in N. NPPF and elsewhere and in Warwick District Local Plan. Has the neighbourhood plan included any specific policies on these that are Leamington focused and add to the local plan? There is a conservation area appraisal, but is that up to date? Someone attending may know more about this. <laughs> Part of the um, District Conservation Areas Forum. We used the most up-to-date conservation area appraisal assessment. That's all I can say. Um, it probably does need an update, I would say, yes. Uh, there is a specific policy about conservation areas in the neighbourhood plan, policy RLS 3. Uh, it doesn't specify certain specific streets or anything like that, 
uh, but it does talk about listed buildings, non-designated heritage assets, landmark buildings, parks and gardens, water courses, the canal, the railway, um, classical set pieces, if you like, key thoroughfares. So there is a lot of detail in there specific as well. I would, I'm not going to read the whole thing out because it's quite a long policy as well. But if you want to have a look at it, it's RLS 3 in the Neighbourhood Plan on the Neighbourhood Plan website. Thank you, Catherine. Um, Chris Davis, how would retention of the COVID pedestrian on the parade impact on the plan? Um, well, pedestrianisation of the parade is something that we looked at way back in 2017 before any impact of COVID was felt. Um, we had long conversations with the WCC um, Transport Highways Department. Um, they at the time, and we took their advice because they are the experts, didn't feel that it was something that was workable that they wanted to do. Um, so we don't mention it specifically within the Leamington Neighbourhood Plan, although we are aware there's a lot of support for it and a lot of, of uh, talk about not having it uh, for certain reasons. It wouldn't particularly impact on the Neighbourhood Plan, to be honest. Um, it certainly, it would in terms of improving air quality, for which we have a specific um, policy. I think it needs... It needs a lot more investigation in terms of its potential impacts on surrounding streets as well, because while we might be dealing with the air quality within the parade, we might then be looking at pushing it further out onto the surrounding streets. I don't know. It's something that highways are doing assessments about at the moment, I know. Thank you. Um, if, if anybody else has a question, they can raise their hand if I've missed you out, or I'll leave it for another second or two. Has anybody else got any that they'd like to ask Catherine? Um, before we hand back to Sydney, I'm just going to do a quick flick through um, to check I've missed nobody out. Um, but I think I can hand back to you, Sydney. Thank you I think much. that's all the questions. <laughs> Is that somebody saying something? Oh, my apologies. There is a question down here from Penny Gillett. Would you like to unmute yourself? Yes, it's, it's from me, actually, and I only was able to put half of the question in because <laughs> my question was, is there anything in the plan to try to reduce the amount of idling? And uh, that depends who you're talking about. But my particular point is, as a resident of central Leamington, is the appalling number of cars and vans which um, are, are sitting there inflicting noise and pollution, pollution. You walk around for half an hour, you'll probably come across 20 or 25, and that's the equivalent of an awful lot of traffic. If you attempt to uh, engage in conversation with these people, um, the best one I've had was from an, a guy in a Bentley who apologised, a big new Bentley, but by and large, it's uh, people are so aggressive that I've given it up on instructions of my family. Um, but it really is awful. That why do we not have signs across the centre, like in Westminster Council? Um, I'll shut up. No, there isn't anything specific in the neighbourhood plan about idling or getting it to be stopped. Um, it's certainly something that I can raise myself with the County Council Highways Department, if you would like me to do so, have a word with them see if they've got any plans for such signage. Uh, we do certainly um, encourage in the neighbourhood plan to support um, electric vehicle usage, electric buses, more electric charging, ve uh, vehicle charging points all across town, not just in the car parks or the town centre. Thank you. In fact, um, Hugh and Christine Woodland actually asked, could you elaborate on the problems with air quality? Do you have Um, well, it, it, we don't have a specific, we do have a specific um, policy for air quality, uh, but it relates solely to uh, development, uh, building development rather than the use of transport and travel. Uh, within the traffic and transport policy, uh, we support um, measures to improve the air quality of Bar Street and High Street. Um, Prince's Drive uh, around the tip area and various other places as well. There's a whole list of specific hot, point, hot points in town where we know 
air quality is bad, not just the Aquama that's down at the bottom of, of uh, Bar Street, but uh, in different areas around town. So we're also looking at encouraging as much as possible and enabling more walking, cycling and sustainable public transport. Thanks, Catherine. Just, just to add to that, if I can, yeah, I think Catherine's made a good point there. There's only so much that the planning process can do to achieve that. And obviously we'll be looking to work closely with the district as the, you know, the environmental health authority and the county as the transport authority to try and address that issue. So there are some elements of the neighbourhood plan that could assist that, but it's part of a sort of bigger picture of how roads and transport are managed. Really. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Ignati Dykov Richmond has made an observation or question. He said, uh, definitely worth looking into pedestrianisation of the parade again, though I prefer the term car free rather than pedestrian. I am particularly excited that the society's last meeting, Margaret of the Council said there was no reason why the parade couldn't stay car free. And his question is, does the neighbourhood plan talk about bringing in 20 mile per hour zones? It would help, it would help with noise and air pollution as well as make the town safer? No, is a short answer. We have <laughs> nothing in there about cutting speed limits whatsoever. No, I'm afraid not. And how would you, if somebody was interested in that, yet yeah, again, what's the mechanics that they do to actually raise that as a question, Catherine? I think the first port of call uh, would be county highways. Drop them a line or, or, or drop me a line with your query and I can pass it on and they will probably get back to me a bit quicker. Thank you. Um, Mark Sullivan, uh, Warwick County Council uh, tried a traffic management plan for Leamington with pedestrianisation. Uh, I need to start everything else. The... I've unmuted un un up there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> or as well. oh. so, okay, well, so here you can do centre everyone. So that, that's good. So you've got one needs to just click there on mute if that's okay. In there if you wanted to. Or, or just make your conversation. I can't look on that. They just said put a hand up. Ruth, that's great. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> WDC tried a traffic management plan for Leamington with pedestrianisation of the parade some 15 years ago and got into terrible controversy. The County Council won't take the initiative again but actual events have caused its pedestrianisation and this time it should be bottom up. We can argue that it should continue while a review of how to handle the traffic on other roads is undertaken. Yep, fair enough. Can't argue with that. Yeah, sorry, just briefly there. So, so my understanding, this isn't what the town council is doing, but I understand that the partners are looking at the issue of the parade and I believe that the intention is for it to stay in as it currently is for uh, the next few months in the short term. Um, but then there is an intention to have a much wider consultation and engagement about its longer term future. So I'm sure the Leamington Society as the Town Council will be very interested to hear more about that and will respond and, and get involved in that discussion in due course. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Yaz Shilton from Open Arts Festival is is there any mention in the neighbourhood plan regarding the use of outdoor spaces and gardens, specifically outdoor events? Are there any new regulations or posts? It's a key in one question. It seems no, as if, uh, I if I did, I'm not going to key in. Sorry, Carol. Uh, Ruth, I'll come to you in a moment. Um, so that question is about, are there any new regulations about hosting events in outdoor spaces and gardens? Uh, policy RLS 16 talks about the town centre and uh, talks about supporting development proposals for the creation of a central open space or a network of spaces to support outdoors events and civic functions. Um, I think particularly there people were talking about the front of the town hall and going that way down towards um, Jefferson Gardens. Uh, we do not talk at all about events in existing spaces. No, that's something for the District Council. So this follows it on from Chris Davis. Does the neighbourhood plan encourage the use of the bandstand in Pumpering Gardens for events? No, I'm afraid it does not. I'd just like to say oh. on that actually, there's just so you know, there is somebody, um, Nikki Bellinger, Green Spaces, 
they they look after the bandstand and um, I'm aware that there are programmed an awful lot of events hopefully um, to take place as soon as possible so that if anybody's interested in programming event or knowing that that'll come under green spaces. Uh, Ruth, oh, any... yes. <laughs> There's her hand up. Ruth, what would you like to ask? Uh, just basically, the parade, as it is open now, it's not particularly appealing. It's it's not particularly attractive layout for, for pedestrianisation. But also, here on Rugby Road, we have so much more traffic because the pedestrianisation of the parade. And so it's difficult to be very enthusiastic about pedestrianisation because of the extra traffic on side roads around the town and here. Thank you very much for that Ruth. Um, as we know I think this whole pedestrianisation is going to be it's a particularly interesting discussion at the moment I think you'll see hear an awful lot more about it there's an awful lot of discussions to be had and it's a good time to mention now that our next speaker actually is going to be um, Stephanie Kerr who's a director of Bid Leamington and uh, she's, as you know, we're a business improvement district. So part of her responsibility is to represent the 500 businesses in a particular area. So I'm sure that will um, be raised at that discussion too. Meanwhile, Robert would like to know, Rob Goundry, um, modern cars, from observation, modern cars have an automatic engine stop facility, but this doesn't cut in until the engine is warm. Idling produces significantly less pollution than operating on full power. In other words, going along continuously slowly, rather than stopping and starting the whole time, is best from an air pollution point of view with internal combustion engines. Thank you, Robert. Um, Mark Sullivan, use of the bandstand now, it has been restored, is for those who want to make use of it. It isn't a land, it isn't a land use matter for the neighbourhood plan. And that is correct. It's a, it's a lovely, it looks absolutely stunning. Um, so it actually, hopefully, when we can, it'd be lovely to see it being used by lots of people, lots of performers. That's beautiful. So are there any other questions? Uh, anybody else like to put their hand up or put something in the chat? Or have we uh, asked Catherine everything and Stephen everything we want to know? And have we put the six of the main in our diaries? Please do. Look out for these everywhere. Where will we get those from Catherine? Can we pick those up from the town hall? Well actually if you go onto the Neighbourhood Plan website, uh, go on the home page, scroll halfway down, you can click and it will download and you can print at home if you wish to do so. Put them in your windows, give them to friends, neighbours, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, unless there are any other questions, Ruth, you still got your hand up, but I presume that's just a hand up from before. So I'm just having a quick look around. And in fact, Jan has another question. No? Oh, sorry, a round of applause. It's clapping. I'm confusing. <laughs> Thumbs up with clapping. <laughs> They're quite similar-ish. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I think there are no further questions. And as, as Catherine said, if you do actually have a think after this, once you've had a good read and uh, gone onto the website and digested at your leisure, the hundred and how many pages? Ten pages? Six. Oh, it's okay, when you've had a sort but of a couple of, a lot of that's appendices, Carol, can I just say? The actual document itself with, with the policies is about 64 pages. So that's, that's a light read then. Yeah. So once you've done that, then please do feel that you can actually email Catherine or Stephen with any other questions. Um, meanwhile, I will hand back to um, our chair, Sydney Sison. Thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you to both Stephen and to Catherine. Thank you not only for this afternoon, but for all the enormous amount of work that's gone into preparing this plan for all the people you've consulted and then pulling all the consultations together, sorting it out and getting it through your various working parties, committees and all the rest of it. Can we all give you a big round of applause? Thank you very much. Um, it was challenging but enjoyable is what I like to say. And hopefully it will indeed be carried on May the 6th. We hope so. <laughs> and just, just before we finish, I'm going to hand you back to Carol. She's already highlighted one of the forthcoming meetings and maybe more.
Uh, yes, uh, just a quick one. Um, April the 18th is our next talk with Stephanie. We have got a program that is ongoing and the fabulous Archie Pitts has been putting them all on the website. So if you feel you'd like to share them or go back and have a look at them, there, all the talks are actually available on the um, lemingtoncensociety.org. Um, if you haven't joined the society, please do, because it's the best society to be a member of, but I am biased. Um, so please do join, do tell other people, because we're continuing to do a program of talks where we can, and we really like the fact, and we'd really love seeing you. Thank you all so much for coming, but also it's really nice to spread the word. That we've got some really interesting subjects coming up in the next few months. So please do invite friends, family, neighbors to join in, because at the moment there are a lot of things, a lot of changes, and we're very excited to have our speakers today and our program going forward. And don't forget, Sydney is going to be hot off the well, press with her new trees video in the next two or three weeks. So that will be a treat to look forward to as well. Thank you all very much. We look forward to seeing you again shortly. Bye bye for now. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.